Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate this Sunday Eucharist listening to the words of our Lord Jesus so that He could teach us authentic discipleship, a discipleship with conscience. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who ever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. 
prosper the work of our hands. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Let your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your laws. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me, without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion. Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle, would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you 
who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. When I was a newly ordained priest, I remember one advice of my parish priest regarding making a homily. Tinuruan niya ako, sabi niya, paano nga ba gumawa ng homilia o sermon sa misa? And I cannot forget this line coming from him. He said, If your homily does not touch the conscience of people, then it is just entertainment. Kapag ang homily mo ay hindi nangungusap sa konsensya ng mga tao, nagpapatawa ka lang sa homily mo. Similarly, my dear brothers and sisters, Christianity without conscience is also not authentic Christianity. Kapag ang isang Kristiyano ay sumusunod kay Kristo pero walang konsensya, hindi yan totoong pagsunod kay Jesus. That is why our readings today teach us, God teaches us about authentic discipleship. And authentic discipleship is discipleship with conscience. Ang mga pagbasa po natin sa araw na ito ay tungkol sa pagsunod sa Diyos. At ang tunay na pagsunod sa Diyos ay ang pagsunod na nangungusap sa ating mga konsensya. That is why in our gospel reading today, Jesus teaches us about preparing to follow Him. How do we prepare ourselves to follow Jesus? How do we prepare ourselves in discipleship? And Jesus teaches us the way to prepare ourselves for discipleship is to forget yourself Surrender, renounce your possessions. Let them go, give them up, and carry your cross. That is how conscience is formed. By learning to let go, by learning to share, by learning to give, by learning to sacrifice, by learning to carry the cross. Kaya pala, yan ang paghahanda na sinasabi ni Jesus sa pagsunod sa Kanya. Matutong magbigay, matutong magsakripisyo ng sarili, matutong magbahagi, matutong dalhin ang krus sapagkat ang pagsunod kay Jesus ay ang pagsunod na nabubuo ang konsensya natin. At madedevelop lang ang konsensya natin kapag natuto ka ng 
magbigay at magparaya para sa Diyos at para sa kapwa. I remember one time, I was with my niece, no, ang aking pamangkin. Dahil wala siguro akong anak, ay ako ang paboritong tiyuhin ng mga pamangkin ko dahil uh, mahilig ako sa kanilang magbigay ng kung ano-ano. No? Parang sila na ang mga anak ko. One time, I was with one of my nieces and we stopped by a store. Sabi ko sa kanya, you buy anything you want. If you want these chocolates, then take it. This is for you. So she took one, one pack of chocolates. And I teased her. I told her, that is for you and you alone. Consume it. Do not give it to your sister, I told her. That is for you. Ha? Wag, mong, wag mong bibigay yan, sa'yo yan, no? ubusin mo yan. No? Alam nyo, nagulat ako sa sagot niya. Sabi niya sa akin, no, I will share this to my sister. No? That's bad, she said. No? I want to share this with my sister. You see, conscience is formed when you teach the person how to give. I think I am teaching her bad conscience by telling her not to share and not to give. You see, we can only develop our conscience through the cross. When you are able to give, when you are able to share. And this young niece of mine have taught me that at an early age, you can develop already the conscience of a Christian by teaching her how to share, how to give. And at an early age, you already develop, it is not only about myself, my sister, my brother, they are also hungry, they also need food. That is why the way of the cross is the only way to develop the conscience of a Christian. And without conscience, Christianity is not authentic. That is why our first reading today from the Book of Wisdom reminds us of this. To use not only our own human wisdom, but to listen also to the counsel and wisdom of God. That is authentic discipleship. When we are now able to let the wisdom of God lead our own wisdom, so that it will not be only human wisdom, but the wisdom of God. And God's wisdom can speak to our consciences. Kaya po, sa pag-attend nyo pa lamang dito sa misa ko, tinuturuan na tayo ang konsensya natin. Imagine, what time did you wake up this morning? Siguro lalo sa mga malalayo pa na galing, galing pa kayo sa malayong lugar. Maybe you woke up at 5 or 6 a.m. this morning instead of, you know, just waking up at 12 in the afternoon because it's Sunday. Thank you. You have given yourself. You have done the way of the cross and gave yourself to God by waking up early. Siguro meron ditong mga anak na hinila ng magulang nila. No? Wag na kayong sumimangot. No? Baka nakasimangot pa tayo aga-aga ng misa ni Father. No? Your parents are teaching you Christian conscience to teach you how to give to teach you how to share. 
Thank you also for listening to me, ranting for 10 minutes now. No? Siguro 10 minutes na ang hobeli ni Father, tama na. No? Thank you by listening to me for a few minutes, you are able to develop the way of listening, the way of giving yourself your time to another person. You are carrying the cross when listening to me. No? And you develop, you develop the way of the cross, the way of giving, the way of listening. For those who are serving us, no? yung mga lectors and commentators, lay ministers, the choir, the altar servers, you are not just, you know, fulfilling the attendance, checking the attendance for you. Every day, every Sunday that you serve in church, you are developing your conscience that it is not just about myself. It is about giving to the Lord, even if it takes my time, even if it takes my sleep, I will serve. You see, just attending and serving the Mass develops our conscience. So when you attend the Mass, do not seek to be entertained Seek to develop your conscience. Sana kapag magsisimba kayo, wag niyo lang hahanapin na hahanapin ko yung paring mahilig magpatawa, no? Yan, no? Diyan ako aaten kasi naaaliw ako, no? Ang misa hindi lang naman yan pagpapatawa sa inyo. Ang misa dapat nakaka-develop ng konsensya natin. At tuwing a-attend kayo ng misa, huwag niyo lang maaalala yung nakakatawang kwento ko, yung nakakatawang kwento ni Father. No? Sana maalala niyo rin, ano kaya sa konsensya ko ang nabuhay sa misang ito? That is why our second reading today, the letter of St. Paul to Philemon, speaks to the conscience. St. Paul writes to Philemon and speaks to his conscience. He said, I am sending you back, Onesimus, your slave. But please, do not just treat him as your slave. Love him as your brother. You see, the letter of St. Paul does not just entertain Philemon. He speaks to the conscience of Philemon. And there, authentic Christianity springs forth. A Christianity with conscience. I will not... Uh, extend more the cross that you are bearing. <laughs> but thank you for listening to this homily. And I pray that whenever we attend the Mass, we are not just entertained, but we develop our conscience by listening to God's Word, giving ourselves, giving our time. And when we learn how to give, when we learn how to share, when we learn how to renounce even ourselves and carry the cross, there we can find authentic Christianity, a Christianity with conscience. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we follow Christ, we are His disciples. In union with our Lord, let us come to the Father who remains our refuge and our strength. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Pope, our bishops, our clergy and religious may continue to show forth an example of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That developing countries may not lose sight of God's will for human happiness in a quest for prosperity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who struggle with addictions or emotional illness may learn to walk in the steps of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may lay aside trust in material possessions and find our true strength in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have passed through this short life may exalt and rejoice forever in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Father of all wisdom, marvelously you created us. With greater wonders you redeemed us. Hear the prayers of the disciples of your Son. Grant our requests according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please visit it. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, 
graciously grant that through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty. And by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, come Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Please stand. The Mystery of Faith In the Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Uh, maybe many of us uh, naninibago ho sa mga kinakanta natin sa misa. Uh, these beautiful um, melodies that we sing in our celebration of the Mass here at the Manila Cathedral is a composition of Father John Van de Steen. He was a CICM missionary from Belgium. And he was also a musician. And he established the Manila Cathedral Choir in 1958. So he served here at the Manila Cathedral. And he composed beautiful melodies for the celebration of the Eucharist. What we are using now is a composition of his, a short mass for the people. And we are again introducing these beautiful melodies, all the responses in the mass, as well as the offertory and the communion hymn. So I encourage all those who are celebrating mass here with us at the Manila Cathedral to learn these songs. So let us be patient. Baka nagtataka tayo. Hindi kami masyadong makakanta sa misa. These are new, uh, newly adapted songs by Father John Van de Steen. We uploaded on our social media pages uh, instructional videos even in our YouTube channel so that you could practice at home. So that when you celebrate Mass here with us or online, you can join in the singing during the Mass. You can also um, download for free no, the, the music sheets so that you could follow in our celebration. If you want to buy a printed copy of the book, it is available in our souvenir shop here at the cathedral so you could have a personal copy of uh, the music of Father Van de Steen. Secondly, uh, this coming September 8th, I think it's a Thursday, we will celebrate the Feast of the Birth, Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Our celebration of Masses here at the Cathedral will be at 7.30 a.m., 12.10 in the afternoon, and we added another Mass in the evening at 5.30 p.m. So these will be celebrated here at the Manila Cathedral and will be also broadcasted online. Let us now stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you now and forever. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds now and forever. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace now and forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Sai da 
Oh, 